Government proposed spending an additional 1.8 billion CDs as supplementary budget. John Atta Mills Presidential Library officially opens. And Nigeria pastor arrested for chaining son for stealing. Good evening and many thanks for joining us. It's News Hour live on GBC 24 and GTV. My name is Emmanuel Amagashi. And my name is Akpene Avo Ajaja. Thanks so much for joining us for the news. Now, in our opening story, it's one week since the Electoral Commission started the exhibition of the voter register in Accra. GBC 24 visited some centers and found out that so far, the exercise has seen low patronage. At some centers, less than half the number of registered voters had come to verify their names and particulars in the register. Week two of the exhibition of the voters register exercise and officials at some centers say not many people have so far shown up to check their details. At the Kanda Cluster of Schools Exhibition Center, only two people had verified their names as at 10 a.m. on the eighth day. The electoral officers say, apart from the first day, which saw over 40 people come in to verify their details, only pockets of people come in to check. A lady who came to check her name found out she was at the wrong center and had to check from other centers in the community. At the Kanda GNTC polling station center, 111 people had verified out of the 246 registered voters. If your voter ID card is not here and you claim this where you vote, we'll go to the name reference list to see if your name is part of the name. If it's not part, we'll ask you to go to a different center to um, verify from that place to see if your name is, in, is included. But most of the time, people miss, uh, miss their way and they come here and they insist that their name is, is among the names here. But we bear with them to go to the other centers to also go and verify to see if they can find their names there. So far, people are not really coming. People are not really coming. They come at their own time because maybe they're thinking it's a 21 days or something, but they're still going. We have faced no public interference and everything is peaceful and everything is ongoing as we are expecting things to go. At the Information Service 1 polling station, only three people had been to check their details as at 10 a.m. According to officials, they verified about 20 people on average a day. Out of 515 expected voters, only 107 had come to check their names. At the Information Service 2 Center, an official, Mr. Kevin Williams, attributed the low turnout to the verification of the names using the internet. Officials at the Christ the King School La Electoral Station said no NHIS registrant had come to verify, but they had 18 NHIS registration on their list. At the Flagstaff House JHS Exhibition Centre, 158 out of 777 people had been to check their details and 11 people had come to check their names at the time of the team's visit. Officials at all exhibition centres visited were optimistic of a good turnout by the end of the stipulated 21 days. We now take you to some centres in Tamale and Ho in the northern and Volta regions on day 8 of the exercise. The exhibition of the voters' register has so far received a very poor turnout in the northern region, with most of the people complaining they are not aware of the exercise. People are not only complaining of poor publicity of the exercise, but posters and directional signs to the centers are not visible enough to alert them to the centers. GBC 24's Abdul Hai Moomin is in Tamale and reports that many people who may have previously registered with the NHIS cards are not aware that their names have been published in the papers for them to take further action. By day 7 of the exercise, a total of 224,907 out of a registered total voter population of 1,282,495 had verified their details in the voter region. This notwithstanding, 
Patronage for the ongoing exercise within the whole municipality of the Volta region is not encouraging. Most exhibition centers visited by GBC 24's Volta Regional News Team within the capital had reports of low turnout as the exercise entered its second week. 106 out of the 589 people had also gone to verify their status at Center B. According to exhibition officers, there have only been minor issues of wrong spelling of names that had been recorded. No one had also gone there with any issue pertaining to the deletion of names as a result of the use of the NHIS card. The story at the STC Yard Center C was the same. Only one person had been to the center as at 10 a.m. since the start of the exercise. 60 people out of 522 had checked their names. The STC Yard Center B had recorded 122 people out of 746 to check their names. Only one person had been to the center for the day's activity as at 10.13 on Monday morning. A total of 110 out of 833 had been to the STC Yard Center A to check on their names. Only one person had also visited the center as at 10.17 a.m. The news team also visited the Ministry of Agric Center A at Ho Bankui. Here, 105 people out of 508 had gone to check on their names. As at 9.46 a.m., only four people had checked their names for the day's activity. In all the centers visited, the exhibition officers complained of low patronage and attributed it to low levels of educational and awareness campaigns on the exercise. Meanwhile, registration for those whose names were deleted as a result of the use of NHIS cards was also ongoing. GBC24 also gathered that a total of 3,882 people had their names deleted for using NHIS cards to register. However, According to the Deputy Water Regional Director of the Electoral Commission, Nuhu Mahama, a total of 1,061 people had been re-registered by day 7 of the exercise. On the campaign trail this evening, the CPP's flag bearer, Mr. Ivor Greenstreet, says a CPP government will usher in a golden age of opportunities for all Ghanaians. He says Ghana must return to Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's principle of self-reliance. Mr. Greenstreet has been in the Ashanti region as part of his campaign tour. The CPP flag bearers tour took him to Esiwa in the Busumi Frehu constituency, where he addressed party supporters and sympathizers. He said it was the CPP through Dr. Kwame Nkrumah that brought political emancipation to Ghana, and that it is the same party through his presidency that true economic development would come to Ghanaians. The Convention People's Party, CPP, Akuko Party. We are going to give jobs, money, hope, opportunity, progress and development into the ordinary people of this nation. The CPP flag bearer was also at Konongo in the Asante Achim Central constituency to interact with party faithful. For too long, our leaders have not been serving the people. They have been serving themselves. There is too much hardship in Ghana. There is too much hardship in Ghana. Boys are playing. Boys are playing. Electricity is too expensive. Water is too expensive. We are going to change your lives. We are going to give you employment, access to health, education, because we are going to bring new policies. Mr. Greenstreet said there is a need for change in the economic policies of the ruling National Democratic Congress and the new Patriotic Party, and that it is only the CPP that can bring it to fruition. Mr. Ivor Greenstreet's tour also took him to Kumeu, where he led a delegation of party executives to call on the Kumeu Traditional Council. He told Nananum that the CPP is pursuing a new covenant of reconciliation in the Ashanti region. 
in view of the fact that the party in the past had a very strong presence in the region, which it is determined to revive. After receiving blessings from the traditional council, Mr. Greenstreet and his entourage moved to Kumau. At the Deba, Mr. Greenstreet noted that both the NDC and the NPP have disappointed Ghanaians with their broken promises and failure to offer hope to them. He emphasized that Ghana's only hope is the CPP under his presidency. For those of you who know that we have to sack the NDC from power, remember, those of you who are frustrated, remember, that when we sack the NDC from power, we are going to replace them with the Convention People's Party, the Africa Party. We stay a while longer in the Ashanti region. President John Mahama at the weekend joined the people of the Zongo community in Kumasi to celebrate the annual Garigajia festival. The festival brings together all ethnic groups in the Zongo community. This year's festival is to promote peace in the Zongo community ahead of the general elections. Gagajia is a Hausa word that connotes traditional performances. The Zongo community in Kumasi uses this concept to showcase the traditional performances of the various groups within the community to further strengthen brotherliness and unity in diversity after the holy month of Ramadan. This year marks the second time that President John Mahama has attended the festival. He assured Ghanaians that the 2016 general elections will be peaceful. I want to commend our chiefs for the peace that exists amongst them today and the unity that exists. And I'm happy to note that in the Zongo, all of us are living in peace and unity with each other. Aside from that, we are living in peace and unity with people of all other ethnic groups. Normally when it's getting to elections, people have a certain fear that things are going to go wrong and there's going to be violence. I wish to assure you that by the grace of God, inshallah, there will be no violence in this country. Also present at the function was the 2016 CPP flag bearer, Mr. Ivor Greenstreet. The curtain raiser for the event was fronted from by the Amamerso Akufuma of the Kumasi Centre for National Culture. After this, the various ethnic groups in the Kumasi Zongo community displayed their skills and prowess in traditional drumming and dancing. There were performances by the Bulsa community and the Hausa community. The next group of performances were from the Mushi, Mampusi, Utikoli and Chokosi communities. The Gonjes were next and President Mahama, the Gunja, was up on his feet. Other groups that performed at the festival were from the Frafra, Grushi, Sisala, Gau, Dagate, Wangara, Kumkumba, Yoruba, Fulani and Wala communities. Secretary of the Zungo Youth Association, Mr. Ban Beda Mohamed, was grateful to the government for the infrastructural development and social interventions. He commended the president and his team for the nationwide accounting to the people tour. The Sarkin Zungo, Sultan Al Haji Umar Farouk, reminded the youth of their responsibility to ensure continued peace ahead of the elections. As the strength of the nation lies in the hands of the youth, they have a duty to make it a success or bungle it with their immodality sentiments. The youth must be ready to accept to be responsible in the coming months. As the 2016 Iranian election is drawing closer, the youth must ensure that they do not engage in the use of vulgar language and should not generate conflict but rather be agent of peace even before, during and after the election.
President Mama commended the Council of Zungo Chiefs for their peaceful coexistence in the Zungo community in the Ashanti region. He said his government will continue to pursue the social democratic principles of the NDC to better the lot of all Ghanaians. This government is a government of social democracy. And social democracy means that development must be equitable. And it is our responsibility to make sure that every person in this nation, every community, every ethnic group, every geographical area gets its fair share of development. It's still the news live on GBC 24 and GTV. The John Atta Mills Presidential Library at Cape Coast is now opened to the public. The ceremony at which the facility was inaugurated was attended by former president of Malawi, Mrs. Joyce Banda. It forms part of activities to commemorate the fourth anniversary of the death of former President Atta Mills. President John Mahama said the world will be a better place for all if the principles by which the late President Atta Mills lived are emulated. Napoleon Atukito reports. Cape Coast, one of the two places closely associated with the late President John Atta Mills, could be found in Rhapsody as many trooped there to witness one of his memorials. There stands the John Atta Mills Presidential Library at Cape Coast. It is perfectly located in the touristic neighborhood of the Cape Coast Castle, an Anglican church, and the Mantimanzi Palace that houses the Ugwe Traditional Council. The John Atta Mills Presidential Library is the first such library to be graded in the uppermost category. It will be a reference point for all the speeches and works of the late president, spanning a broad spectrum of academic material. The late Professor John Atta Mills was a legal luminary and a development economist. Thus, the library store will especially reflect these. The library is affiliated with the University of Cape Coast and the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, GIMPA. Obviously, the rationale for establishing such a facility stems from the fact that most valuable presidential papers often get missing once the president leaves office. And this may simply be due to the fact that no suitable machinery is usually put in place to preserve these papers. One can cite a classic case of our own recent past when our first president of Sajifu, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's papers were burned after his overthrow in 1966. On the first anniversary of his death, the successor to the late president, John Mahama, cut the sword for work on this project to begin. His presence and that of the former president of Malawi and her husband, Joyce and Justice Banda, gave the day the color it deserved. President John Mahama opened his speech by quoting a frequent salutation made by the late Atta Mills. Late President Professor Mills would have loved to say, my brothers and sisters. Nothing could have brought fond memories about the former president than that. President John Mahama said the location of the library tells a story. The castle, a colonial relic of slavery, reminds us of a past inhumanity. Facing the castle is the library, whose contents speak about a man whose life stood affront to those negatives. Another lesson we should take home from Professor Mills is his tolerance of different perspectives. That was his way of life. And so he listened to everybody, no matter your stature in life. He was receptive to ideas including those that challenged a position he had already taken. The photo essay in Professor Mills' Remembrance brochure album 
absolutely recast the former Ghanaian leader. His deeds, words, posture and demeanor confirms that he was a true statesman whose principles were diametrically opposed to Machiavellian culture. No wonder upon his death, the opposition and his own political kindred came together to celebrate him. From Cape Coast, Napoleon Atukitu reporting. Now, more than 1,000 people are homeless in the Upper East region following 10 hours of torrential rains that hit the region. Most roads are unmotorable and major bridges connecting the towns are broken. A tour of the region by the Deputy Interior Minister James Agalga, the Upper East Minister Albert Abongo, and some officials show destruction of large tracts of farmlands while businesses are still at a standstill. When the rains came down, they completely flooded communities in Bolga. In communities in the Busa North and Kasena Nankana districts, households and farmlands were submerged in water. In the Busa North district, 237 houses were affected, rendering 901 people homeless. Four major bridges linking the communities to the district capital, Sandema, broke. The rain also broke four major dams recently constructed by the MP for the Busa North constituency to enable farmers farm in the dry season. Twelve roads currently under construction in the district were washed away. Over 718 farmlands of rice, maize and millet were badly affected. Most of the affected household lost their electrical gadgets and foodstuffs, among others. The Upper East Regional Minister, Albert Abongo, was worried about the damage caused and assured them that the government will come to their aid. Mr. Abongo advised those living in lowlands to move to hilly areas for safety. We're looking at, uh, in the future, how to uh, design the, the, the feeder rules, particularly where we have uh, uh, waterways uh, around uh, culverts and uh, along valleys. We will have to uh, pr properly protect the embankments. Uh, looking around, one can say that if, if the shoulders were properly protected, we probably would have uh, saved uh, this section of the road. The MP for the Busa North constituency, James Agalga, who is also the Deputy Minister for the Interior, was on hand to sympathize with victims of the natural disaster. Most of the roads you have seen are roads which were constructed. The people were very, very excited. This part of Sandema used to be a cut off from the rest of the township and we fixed this road not too long ago. Yeah, but uh, I mean, man proposes and God disposes 11 hours of rain. I mean, it's expected. So this is a natural disaster. You can't blame this on anybody. The district chief executive of Busan North, Bonaventure Adangabe, said some teachers and students could not go to school because the bridges are broken and roads under construction washed away. The rice sector program in uh, Chuchulaga, about 52 acres of uh, rice has been washed away and most of our farmers have been affected as a result. Later, the team paid a courtesy call on the paramount chief of Busa traditional area, Nab Azantilu. You're watching News Hour live on GBC24 and GTV. We take a break here. We'll be back with business. Starting the right is an everyday thing. You'll soon find out. Well, let's The week and here are some business updates. I am Dorothy Ajamai. Government is proposing to spend an additional 1.8 billion CDs in the 2016 financial year. The development, according to Finance Minister Setepe, is a result of a drop in oil revenue. Government is now estimating $1.4 billion in oil revenue as against the $2 billion it targets for the 2016 financial year. Putting the 2016 budget together, government estimated that oil prices will hover around $53 per barrel on the international market. But the price hit an all-time low of $28, now selling at $45 on the international market. The difference, plus shocks in the price of gold, is what has caused a shortfall in government oil revenue target of $2 billion. Mr. Speaker, based on the revised price 
of $53 per barrel and quantity of 38.73 million barrels used for the 2016 budget. The estimated total petroleum receipts was 2, point, was 2 billion Ghana cities. Of this amount, 1 billion was allocated to the, a, to the ABFA to finance critical capital projects. Mr. Speaker, the crude oil price is estimated to average a wide range of 40 and 50 dollars per barrel for 2016, lower than the average of 53 dollars. These developments will obviously affect the implementation of the 2016 budget. Despite the shocks, Finance Minister Seth Tukbe noted that progress was made in improving the economy. Provisional fiscal data up to the end of December 2015 shows that total revenue and grants were higher than the budget targets by 5%. The overrun in total expenditures, including arrears, narrowed to 2.1% above target. Public debt decreased from 72% of GDP at the end of 2015 to about 63% of GDP at the end of May 2016. At the end of 2015, the primary budget balance that shows our ability to service loans for development was a surplus for the first time in over a decade. GDP also grew by 3.9% at the end of 2015, better than the projected 3.5% you know, in the budget. It is getting better with the economy growing by 4.9% in the first quarter of 2016, compared to 4.5% for the same period in 2015. Moving forward, government is focusing attention on the establishment of an exim bank to improve exports. State-owned agencies with the required financial strength are being empowered to raise credit on their own while winning off some six more government agencies from government subvention. The government has also adopted an average crude oil price of 45.35 US dollars per barrel for 2016. The Economics Department of the University of Ghana has opened a multi-purpose conferencing building. The multi-million dollar facility, which has a 1,000 seating capacity auditorium, was financed by the Bank of Ghana. Vice President Emisa Arthur, who opened the facility, was confident the new face of the Economics Department strategically positioned it to become a center of excellence. Many high-profiled Ghanaians, including the current Vice President Kwesi Misa Arthur and most of the governors of the Central Bank of Ghana, as well as the incumbent Dr. Abdul Nashiru Isahaku, honed their skills at the Economics Department of the University of Ghana. But the department lacks the physical space and infrastructure to expand its academic frontiers. In 2011, this ultra-modern multi-purpose facility was started to put the department shoulder to shoulder with similar departments in universities across the world. The facility has a main auditorium with a seating capacity of 1,000, a multi-purpose foyer to sit 600, two computer laboratories and offices, Opening the facility, Vice President Emisa Arthur was sure it would boost the academic environment and empower students to adapt new initiatives in the economic world. The building was sponsored by the Bank of Ghana. We want our own economy to be managed well by Ghanaians, which means that we have to train them really well. So the fiscal facility you see here is just providing the ambience, very good environment where we can train Ghanaians who can grow up to manage our economy very well. And as a central bank, I see all of our, all around us uh, alumni from here who were trained from here, and they are doing a great job. And we think that we must continue to support this great faculty so that they can produce the best economists who can work in managing our economy and then elsewhere. GBC24 asked why such financial resources would not be channeled into retooling the department to make it a center of excellence such as the London School of Economics. This is phase one. Phase two will be an office complex. Once we have that, um, uh, if you look at London School of Economics, um, the teacher, apart from facilities or infrastructure, you also need a human resource. Uh, we need personnel up to a certain level, senior lecturer, professors, and we are gradually training people to become 
professors and senior lecturers and, 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 and I think in a year or two we will be to that status. So we become a school of economics. Contractors working on the facility where Cardo Construction works are applying finishing touches, especially to furnishing and aesthetics. They say the university has been handed value for money which would last for the benefit of generations. The Food and Drugs Authority merged the best government agency in the first National Best Trade Facilitation Awards organized by the Trade Ministry. Ghana Revenue Authority and the Ghana Ports and Harbour Authority received special awards. The National Best Trade Facilitation Awards is aimed at promoting efficient and effective trade practices. of players in the importing and exporting industry for the year 2015. The aim is to promote and enhance efficient and effective trade practices by all actors involved in trade facilitation. It is also to encourage ministries, departments and agencies MDAs, that routinely issue licenses, permits and exemptions for imports and exports transactions to work towards the attainment of international best practices. In all, seven awards were given to companies who performed in the year under review. Ghana Revenue Authority and the Ghana Ports and Harbour Authority received special awards. The first runner-up for the best freight forwarder in the same category went to Same Lot Shipping Company Limited, of which Teamwork Freight Services Limited was adjudged the best freight forwarder. Global Cargo and Commodity Limited received the best freight forwarder in the last category and the first runner-up went to Bolo Transport and Logistics in the same category. The best ministry, department and agency award was given to Food and Drug Authority. The Minister for Trade and Industry, Dr. Ekwos Piogabra, said the ability of firms to deliver goods and services on time and at the lowest possible cost is a key determinant of their integration into the world economy through the supply value chain. Currently, trade facilitation and its reform have emerged as key factors for international trade efficiency and the economic development of countries including Ghana. This is due to its impact on competitiveness and market integration, and its increasing importance in attracting direct foreign investments, improving the collection of taxes, and reducing incentives for smuggling and corruption, with its resultant reduction in transaction costs. Such reforms obviously bring considerable benefits to the government, the private sector, and consumers. Some of the award winners spoke to GBC24. It is a, a very special award given to Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority um, for our role in trade facilitation in Ghana. And I believe that um, this recognition is, is in order in the sense that when we talk about trade facilitation in Ghana, so far as uh, import and exports are concerned, we believe that Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority stands very, very tall. I'm so excited because after all these years, our work has been recognized that we are now the best trade forwarder for the small category 2016. We are not surprised in any way because we know what we put in. We know our work. We know our wealth. We are not only a Ghanaian top company. We've received similar awards far back in South Africa, who were again the best in Africa. The Ghana Community Network Services Limited, GCNet, is a private-public partnership PPP established in 2000 with a specific mandate to provide e-solution to government in the area of revenue mobilization and trade facilitation. You're watching the major news and this is the business segment. Coming up is insurance news. Public liability insurance is an essential cover for most types of businesses. The policy protects against claims of personal injury or property damage that a third party suffers or as a result of a business activity. Experts in the industry say it is compulsory for employers to sign on to such a policy. Here is a look at policy liability insurance. 
For an employer who works with clients or customers or in public spaces, it's important to protect one's business against claims of damage or injury. That is why public liability insurance includes in one's industry-specific business insurance packages. These packages are tailored to meet the unique requirements of businesses. As well as public liability insurance, they also include professional indemnity insurance cover. Even when a business does everything right, there is always the chance of an accident happening. Public liability insurance ensures that the company can meet the cost of the claim as well as any legal expenses. There are other types of insurance such as the product liability insurance. The head of marketing at Ghana Life Insurance, Mr. Mauli Dugbenu, explains. You are a manufacturer of drinks, soft drinks. You owe a duty of care to the consumers out there mm -hmm. and therefore must ensure that all the safety standards and all the standards established by the Food and Drugs Authority are met. Now, these products get out there and for one reason or the other, somebody consumes and suffers some ailment. You as the manufacturer have a question to answer as far as liability is concerned. Yeah. The chief executive of IMAS, Mr. Larry Giage, said professionals must take up such an insurance policy before being issued with a certificate to practice. Every year you have to renew the professional indemnity policy so that if you give advice as a, an insurer or as a lawyer and you act on my advice, and as a result, you sustain some loss or you have been sued by another person for relying on my advice, you can also proceed against me for giving you the wrong advice. Every professional puts himself out there as an expert okay. in a particular area. School authorities are advised by insurance experts to insure their properties with a public liability product. This will cover any eventuality during the student's period of study. about maternal health and postnatal care to pregnant women in rural areas especially. In the past five years, about 35,000 pregnant women have benefited from this service. An initiative of Grameen Foundation and the Ministry of Health, the mobile midwife also allows the community health nurse to track and, and postnatal attendance of the pregnant woman. A report by Sarah Ofori. In the traditional setup, for instance, when a woman gets pregnant, she is compelled by her beliefs and those around her to resort to unorthodox practices. This include enigma infusion of herbs to purge or concoctions prepared from herbs drunk with a belief that it will aid safe gestation and delivery. Oblivious to the dangers of these practices, these myths, among other factors, erode the gains made towards attaining MDGs 4 and 5, whose goals were to reduce maternal and neonatal mortality. And the main focus is on trying to help people live healthier lives and improve their livelihoods. Throughout the world, our work falls into three categories. One is mobile health, the other is mobile agriculture, and then the third is mobile financial services. Um, what they all have in common is the goal of helping the poorest of the poor take themselves out of poverty. In the past seven years, Grameen has partnered the Ghana Health Service to get about tens of thousands expectant mothers in remote villages, especially on board the program. The problem that we saw there was what we would say largely information-based. Women themselves don't have the information they need to protect themselves, to help themselves. Um, nurses didn't always have the data that they needed. These were things that the mobile phone can help address. So some of the first work we did was the MoTeC project, uh, very closely with Ghana Health Service, and that was to design messages that go directly to women and that their family can also hear that educate them throughout the entire pregnancy and then uh, for the first year of the infant's life. 
Major partners of this program are community health nurses and volunteers from the CHIPS compounds within the localities. They are responsible for tracking the attendance of expectant mothers or checking up on pregnant women. About 50,000 beneficiaries were roped into the program free of charge. They each get maternal and neonatal related messages from conception to the first year of the baby's life at their own convenience. First, we don't use, we don't go to the health care when we are pregnant. We use these herbs, 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 herbs all over. But when this program came, we put ourselves into it and we saw that it's, it's a good thing. They tell us about the health that we use, the effects. When you use it, at times you can lose your baby or even your, the mother. They showed me how to breastfeed my baby. I shouldn't give the child water till six months. So the, and then the first breast milk. In the olden days, you are supposed to pour it out because they said it's not good. But mobile midwife made, made me aware that is the best for the child. Being cash trapped, owners of the program are unable to extend the services beyond the first year of the child. Yet, funding seems not to be the only challenge. You know, connectivity is definitely a challenge. Um, I'd say the biggest challenge for all mobile health projects now is trying to go from pilot to scale. But at this stage of the game, nobody has the hard evidence yet because the research is still coming on a lot of these projects. And also um, there are concerns and fears about cost. You know, how do we pay for all the devices? How do we pay the airtime? Um, really, I think what's needed are very strong public-private partnerships with the people who make the phones, with the, the mobile network operators, you know, and with government itself to figure out how do we make it affordable at scale. The MoTeC application is made up of the nurses application, community mobile midwife and MobiHealth to aid both volunteers and their clients to improve maternal and neonatal health. The mobile midwife application enables pregnant women, new mothers, and their families to receive SMS or voice messages that provide time-specific information about their pregnancies and child care each week. Community nurses use the nurses application to collect patients' data and upload records to a centralized database enabling them to track the care of their patients and identify those who are due for care. Sarah Fori reporting for GBC24. And that was health. Health news was brought to you by FPAC. FPAC blows your pain away. We take a break to make way for the international news. Fruit salad, my wash, I say, and the pair of fruit to my friend of vitamin C, and now scorbic acid, no, who pen ya and home for so. Sarah, so now citrus seed, now vitamin C, a shenoma, so what for citrus seed, the Viara, and one more crow in temple. Nigerian police have arrested a church pastor accused of keeping his nine-year-old son chained up for more than a month as a punishment for stealing. Police say they rescued the boy and arrested Pastor Francis Tao after a tip-off in the town of Ota in southwestern Ogun State. Local media are running a photo of the victim, an emaciated young boy in chains with a padlock around his neck. State police say that it is one of the worst child abuse cases they have seen. They say the boy's father admitted keeping him in chains, believing he was possessed due to his habit of stealing. Next is sports. Time for some updates from happenings in the world of sports. I'm Theophilus Sampa. Hearts of Full came from behind to draw 1 1 with Kumasi Asante Kotoko in Kumasi. The result means Hearts still maintains their top position on the league log whilst Kotoko stay fourth. Kumasi Asante Kotoko played Hearts of Folk at the Barbara Sports Stadium in Kumasi. It was the top of the table clash in March the 21 of the Ghana Premier League. 
former great Olympics forward Kwame Boateng scored in the 17th minute to give the Porcupine Warriors the lead and the spark they needed in the game. Well, it comes in, and again, it's a quarter to play the ball. Kumasiya Sante Kodoko eventually got a score, and Islam and Post, Kumasiya Sante Kodoko certainly want to start the Kahata book again at home. And the goal will be celebrated. Look at the pass once again from Richard Osayajman from the back. Nobody closing him down. JP with a shot. It was palmed back into play, and that was the finish. Sublime. Just at the near post. And Kotoko, Kwame Boateng has given them the lead. What a finish. Hearts responded after the break through Patrick Razak. And Hearts are fought with a chance to score. And again, the Gladiator. He doesn't score. before starting home. Cut out the ball. And Isaac Mensah loved the ball forward. He was on. Hart created some decent chances but failed to score. The encounter ended 1-1. Hart sat on the top of the league table with 38 points, while Kotoko are fourth with 33 points. Well. Let's still stay with the Ghana Premier League and we'll bring you results from other centers and we go straight and at the second DAC Pond Stadium, Hazakes 2, Dreams FC 0, Doma Ahinkro Park, Adriana Stars 1, Liberty Professional Snail, Atechiman, Techiman City 2, Inter Alliance 0, Asuga Kofe, Wafa 2, Bechim United 0, at your Boasi Linkley Stadium, defending champions Ash Gold 1, Ebusuan Dwarfs 1 and Kumasi, Kotoko 1, Hearts of Folk 1 and Prokum Chelsea recorded 2-1 over new edubias so understandings here how the 16 teams have been positioned on the league log hearts of folk are leading with 38 points from 21 games while stars follow with a game in hand and are having 35 points Adriana stars are third with 34 points from 21 games Kotoko are fourth with 33 points with 21 games Media MIC with two games in hand are 33 points Dreams FC six with 32 points after 21 matches Wafa seventh with 30 points Brekum Chelsea eight with 29 points Liberty Professionals nine 26 points Techiman City tenth with 26 points Ash Gold 11 25 points Hazakes 12 25 points Ebusua Dwarfs 13 24 points Bechem United 14 23 points Inter Allies 15 22 points and New Edubiase bottom with 18 points